I managed to build the FX3 rig that they used on the Creator movie. <laughs> In my previous video, I talked about how the creator used a Sony FX3 to shoot the entire movie and what that means for us as filmmakers. Well, going through all that footage, I noticed one very common thing with all the behind the scenes, and that was they were using some sort of rig with their Sony FX3 and their Ronin RS2 gimbal. And it wasn't just a standard setup, it was some sort of shoulder rig along these lines. Now, the actual rig that they used is slightly different than this. This is just the parts I had lying around. It's mostly small rig parts, actually, and I've got a list in the description below. So if you want to build all of this or need to find certain parts to recreate something similar, then it's all there. I'll discuss a bit later about actually how the rig differs, but this is what I managed to build using the bits and pieces I had and probably kind of stuff that you might have lying around at home as well. So of course at the core of this rig we've got the FX3. Here I've got it mounted with a 35mm Vespid Prime. Uh, they actually used anamorphic, it was about 70mm that they were using, but obviously with that anamorphic effect it was kind of similar to 35 apparently. They were also surprisingly using an RS2 gimbal. I don't know if that was just the case that the RS3 wasn't out at that time, but it's great to see that the RS2 is being used in a cinema setting like that. Now I did notice that they had attached a top handle and that's exactly what I've gone and done here. I think theirs was obviously slightly different than this sort of setup. Um, they've also got an FX Lion battery just like the ones I've got here. These are really good batteries. There's a full review of the FX uh, Nano 2s. This is a Nano 1. Uh, my Nano 2s are currently being used elsewhere. Um, but I would definitely recommend if you're going to do this sort of setup, you want to go with a uh, Nano 2 at the back. It's twice the power and obviously is going to help balance this rig a lot better. Otherwise it is quite front heavy. Now I've built this whole thing on rails, so you can readjust how you wish, you can move things forward and backwards, and I think it works quite well. It means that you can push the weight forward a bit, you can obviously bring it in together, depending on the size of your body and everything like that. Uh, the one thing I did notice that if you have it too far back, that actually the gimbal uh, movement gets a bit limited by the handles. And that's one of the big differences with how they had it set up. They had a bit more of a drop to where the handles were, so I guess it gave them a bit more movement but while keeping everything a bit more compact. Another slight difference in their rig as well is they didn't have the Ronin handle here. So as you can see, I've attached this and it has made it a lot longer. But that isn't the case with their setup. They actually um, had a, probably one of those tilter battery adapters on straight onto the RS sort of head. And I guess that was just being powered off the V-Lock battery. And they also had an Atomos uh, Ninja V recorder. Of course, that was recording uh, everything in ProRes RAW. The final thing missing here as well, I just haven't bothered to set it up. They also obviously had a wireless follow focus on the front here, but I was just one step too far when setting this up in a rush. So first off, we got our shoulder pad right here, and as you can see, we have put some rods right onto there. We then need to take the base that we're using. So this is a standard small rig uh, camera base, and we've attached with two of uh, the screws into the bottom onto this cheese plate, which is now holding this uh, Ronin battery in place. So we slide that one on like so, and that's gonna be our adjustability, so we can move it to uh, wherever we want in terms of how far forward we want the whole rig. Next up, you're going to want to add the 90 degree angle bracket as well as the short 15 millimeter rod and of course that NATO rail as well. So the NATO rail is actually sticking out from the side. Just to make things a bit more stable, I'm actually going to put the uh, handles on the front. So I say these are just cheap ones off Amazon. I'm sure you can find probably better uh, handles to use. Then what we're going to do is actually add the front of the gimbal on so that we've actually got something to kind of work with. So here you go, we just kind of put the gimbal on as you do like you normally would. You can tell I'm not used to using the ESR because the battery died as I was shooting. So we carry on. Uh, we now have our NATO rail mount here. So this is kind of a 360, often used for like monitors and everything. So uh, it allows you just to, to have twisting on both sides, which is really handy. So that's just going to attach directly to the RS2 gimbal. So it's going to be directly attached uh, just using the mount like so. You can see right now it's really quite wobbly um, because it's only being held at the back. So this is going to make a massive difference uh, to making this a much more stable setup. Uh, then of course we need to sort of stabilize that. So using the NATO rail that came with uh, this, you kind of want to attach it first onto this one right here. Then you can use that 90 degree angle rod that's right there and you can obviously twist this to how you need it to line up but obviously we can just line it up just like so and then that locks in and that's just going to also help support in the middle as well so it kind of doubles up the usage so you're just going to want to tighten those bits up 
So there we go. So we've got now a basic sort of setup with the gimbal here and it's now attached by two points and also being supported in the middle as well. Finishing touches really, it's gonna be adding the battery mount onto the back. As I said, I've got this battery mount, which is designed for using an Arca Swiss straight into a camera. It's a really cool little thing. I'll be doing a review of that very soon, so make sure you subscribe. But this I'm just attaching to the back as a counterweight. As I said earlier, you really want a heavier battery on the back to really counterweight everything. And also you could attach things like your wireless and other bits and bobs on the back there too. Of course, the final thing is the camera. And as I mentioned before, it's the FX3 as they use in the movie, but with a DZO Vespid Prime. And of course, you're gonna have to then put that on there and then figure out all the balancing for it. Now, as I mentioned before, you can just move this up and down to your desire so you can have it further forward if you wish. Uh, that is obviously gonna make everything much more front heavy. So just make sure you unlock all the bits and then you can move it all the way forward like so. It might be kind of handy if you need to maybe get down over things a bit more, but personally, I think I would rather keep it further back the better because you want all that weight to be further back. The top handle section you're seeing here, well, this is just the one that comes with the RS2. So it's the extension arm and then of course the actual feet for the RS2 using at the top there. So you could obviously take that off if you don't want to use it. it kind of gets out of the way and you can actually see my face now. Um, but if I put it back on, you can see kind of how you can actually lift it up. It's quite nice to use and you can then have it on your shoulder and it kind of gives you quite a nice sort of uh, a balance right there. You would want more weight on the back to make it a much nicer use. Um, but I've done a few tests out in the garden. Uh, sorry, these aren't quite in focus. I was just using this lens. It's all I had on me at the time. But you get a sense of the kind of look that you can get with this sort of setup. When it comes to balancing, it is a little bit awkward. So right now I've just got everything locked off. But if I actually want to turn this on, it's going to be awkward to try and balance like that. So you do have to sort of hold it up, which is, got to say, is a little bit awkward. Um, I guess it's not the end of the world if you have a, a big enough crew and you're doing it like that and have the screen come out as well. So now I've got it set up. So now we've got it right there. So there we go. That's kind of it rigged and ready to go. So with the screen in its current position, it is actually far enough forward that you can just use the built-in screen on the FX3. So you could say that's kind of our way of doing things, uh, the slightly poor man's version uh, and a little bit less rigging than doing it the other way. When it comes to the actual follow speed, as you can see, as I move left and right with the gimbal, I've currently set it to medium. I think it's probably enough uh, for the kind of usage that you'd want to use it for and how they used it on the film. I guess the big question with all of this is why did they choose to do this sort of setup? I mean, it's, it's quite a elaborate rig to use. And it's not something that I've seen done anywhere else where you've done a shoulder mounted version of a gimbal. They could have just gone with the gimbal very bare or just with the sort of standard um, handles on either side, or they could have gone with the um, sort of O-ring kind of setup, but they didn't choose to go with any of those. They, it's interesting they went with a shoulder mount version instead. Now there could be a few reasons for that. It might be that they wanted to have a setup that's just easier to hold for a long period of time. You know, holding a gimbal like that is not nice. Um, and it is frustrating. It, maybe it's a different sort of perspective they wanted. Maybe they actually wanted that height. You know, we're quite used to having slightly low down angles nowadays when doing handheld. They did do some handheld shots where it was just kind of a standard handheld rig, obviously rigged out with V-locks and transmitters and everything. But maybe they wanted to do this sort of setup just so that they had a slightly different perspective of angle. My other thought was just generally the weight. Because you have such a tiny camera, Perhaps they were concerned about the IBIS inside the camera and they didn't want to have that turned on. So maybe they had it turned off for the movie and to stop those micro jitters, they wanted to have it shoulder mounted, um, but they wanted it a little bit smoother. So introducing the gimbal in there as well. It could also be that they wanted to put lots of extra things like wireless transmitters and obviously the VLOC battery and other things at the back here. Um, and that was just an easier way of setting it up. The one final thought that I had that maybe the reason they went for this particular setup uh, rather than handheld or standard sort of gimbal setups we've seen before or an easy rig is the type of look that you're getting from it. Because you're using a gimbal, often the criticism with gimbals is they can look a bit robotic, but actually in a movie that's about AI, perhaps that's the look they're going for. Obviously we've only seen clips of the movie where bits and pieces throughout, but I wonder maybe there's more of this at the beginning of the movie and maybe as it advances through, it gets more and more handheld, for example, as the action changes. It could also just be to help out a bit of VFX. Perhaps they just didn't want handheld because it would just be a nightmare placing things over the top and keeping things tracked well, or at least with this, the tracking was just that bit easier. 
Whatever the reason they've gone with, it's certainly an interesting setup and probably something I will try on a shoot at some point. Whether it's worth the rigging and all the setup, I don't know. Perhaps it is, perhaps it's not. But I'd be interested to see if anyone out there has done anything like this before, doing a shoulder mounted version of a gimbal um, and whether actually there's been any really good uses for it. What have you found has been a great use for this sort of rig? If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already seen uh, the creator video where I talk about how I think this is changing the industry, then make sure you check out that video. And I've also got plenty of other FX3 videos out there as well.